Welcome to the Fast Mode Podcast Series. I'm Tara Neil, and with me today, we have Andy Yue, Vice President of Sales at Wavelow. Wavelow, a division of Two Cows, is a modern cloud-based platform designed to radically simplify OSS and BSS technology management and improve internet access worldwide. Built on event-driven architecture, Wavelow connects disparate business and operational systems, seamlessly integrating into operators' existing infrastructure. With an impressive background in engineering, delivery and sales, and decades of industry experience, Andy helps accelerate Wavelow's mission to help operators globally increase revenue and decrease costs side by side with both Wavelow's team and customers. Andy joins us today as part of our coverage of DTW Ignite 2025. Welcome, Andy. Great to have you on today's episode. Yeah, thanks, Tara. I appreciate you having me. It's great to be here. Awesome. Okay, so um, diving right in. Um, how was DTW Ignite 2025 and what were some of Wavelow's main showcases? Yeah, thanks, Tara. That's a good question. You know, um, DTW is probably for us one of the most important events of the year. Um, we we believe that it, there's a lot of benefit in being part of the, the TM Forums organization. We're members. Um, we come to the event fresh from uh, achieving a very important certification in the open digital architecture. And for us, the timing was right to really make a splash at the event. Um, it's important, of course, to recognize that um, as you walk around the event, everybody wants to talk about AI and agentic AI. Yeah. And that is a, that yeah. is a theme we've seen uh, this year throughout uh, most mm -hmm. of the, the conferences that we've been to. Um, yeah. The analysts, uh, some of the analysts we spoke to um, were very, um, uh, they were very uh, complimentary about the Wavelow's positioning and what we were bringing to the to the show because mm -hmm. it, they they told us that we're one of the few vendors that really seem to understand what's necessary here um, in this mm -hmm. industry. Um, we've we decided that we would make a splash at this show. Okay. So yeah. larger booth, premium location, mm -hmm. lots of sponsorship. We uh, we we operated a catalyst alongside British Telecom mm -hmm. and CGI. Mm -hmm. And one of the keynotes, we delivered one of the keynotes um, alongside our one of our key customers, yeah. mm -hmm. Boost Mobile. So that was really mm -hmm. important for us. Yeah. And we had a large yeah. team in place and we had plenty of analyst and press interviews. So for us, it was a really big show. And I think that anyone um, attending DTW uh, these days will see a market difference between DTW 2025 and probably TM Forum Nice back just before the uh, the pandemic. Uh, where I think the 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 TM forum it hadn't lost its way, but not many people felt that it was relevant. Um, it's definitely become relevant again, and so mm -hmm. it's uh, it was delightful to be there. Wow! Well, it's it's really exciting, you know, to hear about the big splash that you guys did at the uh -huh. show. So I think I think yeah, it was it was it was very obvious, you know, we did the coverage and and we saw that, you know, all the showcases mm -hmm. that you guys did and also your uh -huh. keynote uh, dress and stuff. Okay, so um, you know, you spoke about your Catalyst project. So can you tell us more about uh, the project this year? Um, I think uh, you know it is uh, autonomous and sustainable IoT ecosystems, right, and the Internet mm -hmm. of Moving Things. So yeah, we, we would like to. Uh, learn more about this yeah this was a interesting catalyst it was um it is phase two of a, of a catalyst so the first phase was was actually show showcased at the same event last year um the the idea is that um the the edge of the network needs to needs some improvement to be able to keep up with a lot of um moving iot objects now the the most obvious moving iot object is a drone and so that's the where the uh, where we chose um, for the showcase, but really for us, the the proof points were twofold. The first was, can we, at scale, move data back from the uh, the edge of the network into um, systems that need that data? For example, AI. So we were integrating with two different AI models um, for the catalyst, and very importantly for us, could we orchestrate back down to the network um, changes and insights that were driven out of the AI? And so for us, this was a this was a big showcase for our uh, event-driven architecture. 
Um, and it's an important uh, for us. This was actually, even though this was phase two of the catalyst, for us this was the first part of a two-part um, showcase. Where and the second part, uh, which we're hoping to do next year, is about actually um, billing for those services that are being delivered on the uh, on the, if you like, via the drones or via the edge of the network. So mm -hmm. um, very important catalyst for us. Very important for British Telecom and CGI and the other partners that we had around uh, AI. And uh, yeah, very successful catalyst. We didn't quite win a prize, but um, I think we got close. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that sounds really exciting. You know, drones definitely open up a lot of opportunities, a lot of use cases, right? And I think yeah, we all yeah. have, you know, certain vision of how drones will be part of our lives in the future. And, and therefore, like, you know, this, this element, this backend support to it is, is really important. And you guys mm -hmm. are, you know pursuing something really exciting in that way yeah, okay yeah. so um expanding on another area of the show what were the key takeaways from your presentation on real-time data and event-driven uh, architectures um that's a really good question you know most of the um, keynotes that we saw presentations we saw on ai were really about doing um trying to layer ai on top of a legacy architecture there are a ton of legacy architectures um, in the industry and there's a lot of history to that. Um, the problem is, is if you try and overlay an AI project onto onto a legacy architecture, then mm -hmm. um, it's very, very different, uh, difficult actually. And we'll, and we'll, I think we'll explore that later on in this uh, podcast. Mm -hmm. For us, it was about like what kind of modern architecture do you need as a as a um, as a precursor to doing a large AI project, and actually, what other benefits? What an architecture like that bring. So, the joint presentation that we did with Boost was really about the uh, the benefits, the the day to day operational benefits of having an architecture like ours. Mm -hmm. The benefits that Boost has seen, not only in terms of, um, you know, agility and uh, and scale, but also just you know, the ability to make um, to to make rapid decisions, the ability to see what's happening in their business, not mm -hmm. just in the network, but in their business, okay. and the flexibility to be able to plan. Um, uh, uh, if you like enhancements to their business new offers without being constrained by you know a very clunky legacy architecture so the the keynote that we did was really about the benefits of um, our architecture even before you consider um, putting ai on the if you like using it to support ai mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so yeah mm -hmm. yeah very very wow. is, is if i can't say so myself is a very cool uh, keynote yep. yeah yeah, yeah, awesome. Okay, now moving on, we would like to learn more about, um, you know, the issues or challenges of implementing AI projects in legacy architectures. I'm sure you guys, uh, you know, see this a lot uh, in, de in deploying, you know, your solutions. So, so what's your take on that? Yeah, we do. And, you know, um, AI requires real time data. It requires it the um, uh, um, like as, as events happen in your business, mm -hmm. AI needs to know about it because you need to be able to make decisions about, um, um, you know, uh, for example, next best offer, you might have a subscriber in your channel. You might have to make mm -hmm. some decisions based on the, that subscriber's behavior. And um, AI, it, unless, the, unless AI is aware of what the subscriber is doing, that becomes very difficult. And the reason that's a problem with a legacy architecture is because the data is siloed. It, it exists, mm -hmm. your, your business data and your subscriber data exists in multiple systems. And um, the way we like to talk about that is that those systems, you are, you, the data is chronically locked in to those systems. It becomes a compounding issue every time you try to do a project and your data is disparate and locked in and hard to get to and not real time. That um, the more projects you do on top of that data, the harder things become. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for us, this is really about um, uh, our architecture does not lock in the data. The data is forward of the systems that use it, which means that it's right there for you to see, to control, and to use. And uh, and, and this was one of the things that came out um, when we were um, on stage with Boost. By the way, I should have said we're very honored to have Boost with us uh, in that mm -hmm. presentation. Mm -hmm. um, that was one of the things that came out in that presentation is that when the data is forward, it, um, it makes life a whole lot easier. And it actually makes things very efficient. So anyway, the, and, and we're starting to see, if you look at the industry as a whole and started to see reports from some of the really big analysts, um, mm -hmm. a lot of AI projects are starting to fail. One of the reasons, of course, is uh, data is locked in to legacy systems. Mm -hmm. 
And then I think everybody's everybody's been rushing into AI projects thinking that it's a panacea and it really mm -hmm. isn't. Yeah. And so, yeah, you'll see a lot of articles now around uh, AI projects that are not necessarily failing, but they're just not delivering what the, uh, you know, what the executives are hoping out of those programs. Mm -hmm. And that's because, you know, uh, we are not investing enough in the fundamentals of it, which is making sure, you know, you have the yeah. in access to data as you need it in one place, not siloed, not conflicting data, right? Yep, so, yeah, absolutely right, so. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So I think we have one last question for today, which is, you know, we want to look at um, event-driven architecture. What are the other benefits of um, of uh, this architecture? Yeah, you know, um, uh, if I go back to the that first question about DTW and making a splash, mm -hmm. one of the major things, uh, actually many of the things that Wadelow has done is solved some of telecom's most difficult challenges. And we've proven that out at scale, uh, obviously, with, uh, with, with our customers that are referenceable. Um, the, one of the primary issues that people have uh, today is there is a, a very real and rational fear of migration. Um, mm -hmm. Most people, possibly all people, have um, you know, long-term memory of migrations that are difficult. And, it's, and the migrating from one yeah. system to another is a very, very complex Mm -hmm. um, a program to to at least kind of contemplate. Um, mm -hmm. We've solved that problem. So the the benefits of our architecture is we were able to, um, with one of our customers, they were able to continue operating on a on a new, on a legacy stack at the same time as implementing a new stack. And we migrated all of the subscribers, millions of subscribers, over a period of time, and mm -hmm. we kept the lights on. There was no outage. There was no ETL. There's no extract transform and load process. And so we uh, we've, we um, uh, we made that process uh, very clean and very nice, and we can bring that to other operators. So migrating mm -hmm. from a leg once the once our event driven architecture is basically in place, then it's a logical step at some point in the future to contemplate um, a straightforward subscriber by subscriber migration from a legacy mm -hmm. system to one of Wavelow's modern systems. And that's something we're very proud of, and that also is extremely referenceable. And so if, uh, if any of your listeners wants to uh, uh, come talk to us about how that process works, we'll be delighted to talk to them about it. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think that, that's really amazing. So, um, which means that, you know, you basically pave the way for, you know, speed up uh, or accelerate, mm -hmm. um, you know, all the future AI implementations, you know, in one way yes. or the other. Right. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Right. No. It's it's um it's a really really fundamental uh, change to the way people think about um, OSS BSS architectures. I don't mm -hmm. believe that really anybody else um, in the industry has something like this. Most people use uh, Kafka and event driven architectures in the network, but they tend mm -hmm. to think about those as as, um, as noisy, chatty, you know, problem based yeah. uh, sets of mm -hmm. information. But if mm -hmm. you think about an um, event-driven architecture in your business, in your OSS, BSS, you need to flip that, you need to flip your thinking. This is extremely relevant business data that you need to understand. And it's not that each event is something bad, it's actually each event is something good. And so yeah. you need to you can use that for, uh, for to take some action against it. So yeah, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a really fundamental change. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, Andy, I think, uh, you know, uh, we, we have discussed some really interesting topics, you know, from DTW and mm -hmm. event driven uh, architectures and, you know, AI, AI and, you know, all the um, infrastructure that you need to have in place before operators embark on more ambitious, you know, uh, plans mm -hmm. ahead. Um, yeah. Well, that's really interesting. So I must say thank you so much for joining us um, mm -hmm. in this session, um, you know, and you've shared these insights about, um, especially on AI powered automation and intent-based networking, um, as well as Wavelow's uh, role in this space. So thank you. Thank you, Tara. It's been a pleasure. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, to everyone tuning in, thank you guys for listening. If you want to learn more, visit www.wavelow.com and follow us for more updates and insights as we continue to uncover the latest in technology and telecommunications. See you in our next session. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.